Today, I will be discussing parkinsonic endoscopic laminotomy for lateral recess stenosis and central canal stenosis. A posterior decompression method evolved from open laminectomy to the microscope, followed by microendoscopic endoscopic laminotomy, MEL. Recently, a less invasive method, parkinsonic endoscopic laminotomy, was developed. PEL is the least invasive method. We started this clinical study in 2013. Uh, the purpose of the study is to discuss the usefulness of PEL that is available for lateral recess stenosis and central canal stenosis. We performed PEL on 57 patients with lumbar stenosis. Uh, 45 of them were lumbar lateral recess stenosis cases and 12 were central canal stenosis. PEL contraindications were a vertebral instability, infection, and tumor metastasis. Outline of PEL method be a posterior approach under epidural anesthesia or general anesthesia with continuous water irrigation. The lamina has to be removed using a 3.5 millimeter high speed drill through a 7 millimeter Pakistani endoscope. Uh, these are PEL procedure points of the unilateral approach at L23, leave the L2 lamina's lower surface with the diamond bore under the endoscope. Detach the yellow ligament from it. Do the same at the L3 lamina. Remove the superior, uh, so, sorry, superficial yellow ligament with a punch. Leave the left L2 inferior facet. Cut the deep ligament from the L2 lamina. From there, detach the deep ligament at L2 using a cartridge. Next, on the opposite side, limb the light medial facet, decompress the lateral recess, then decompress the left lateral recess. After both sides are decompressed, <clears throat> set the drainage tube is place, in place. Evaluation methods are the following. There are three bus factors, buttock and leg pain, leg numbness, and low back pain. We also use a modified maximum score and JOA score. Intermittent claudication may also be checked as an evaluation method. Both of the three factors decrease promptly after operation with significant stati statistics. The first operation results were satisfactory, graded excellent and good in 82.5% of all cases. Debuting operations were done for six cases within three months and four cases were satisfactory. After division operations, three months' evaluation results were satisfactory in 87.7%, and six months' results in 89.5%. Japanese Orthopedic Association scores increased immediately after operation. Also, bus of leg numbness decreased. Intermittent claudication changed from 55 meter pre-op to 500 meter one month after the operation and over the next five months, it gradually increased. Six of the 57 cases were revised. All revision cases had been insufficiently decompressed initially. Three cases were done by PEL. Two of them were satisfactory. The other three cases were done by microendoscopic decompression. Two of them were satisfactory. Unsatisfied group of the initial op was 10.5% of the total five, uh, 55 cases. First subgroup for cases existed with incomplete facet decompression. These cases were revised two by MED and two by PEL. Second subgroup to dual tier cases were mended, one by patch repair technique and the other by open dural suture. Third, the residual numbness cases were hollowed up by conservative therapy. Finally, 10.5%, six cases of the total, were unsatisfactory. We performed 45 cases of PEL on calcified LDH with lateral canal stenosis. Uh, case one, uh, number one, the red dotted line on the pre-op sagittal CD plane shows the position of the actual image with calcified nucleus. The post-op image showed the same level minus the calcified LDH. The green dotted line showed the same result on different level. In the 3D image comparison, the decompression of the lateral set stands out. 
the, these shots of case one are the same under MRI. A case one is classified as the age and laterally set stenosis. Firstly, he drills the S1 lamina. Next, reject the yellow ligament uh, surface layer uh, using a punch. Then, detach the S1 lamina ligament using a curettage. Conversely, shape the upper L5 lamina and detach the ligament. The bleeding must be stopped using a radio electrode. The yellow ligament along the lateral recess must be dissected using a curettage. Then, dissect the yellow ligament deep layer using punch forceps. The oblique cannula is uh, suitable for retracting of the S1 root. The lateral recess osteophyte must be shaved using a diamond bird. From the S1 root short space, you can remove the protruded nucleus using forceps. Uh, while the osteophytes must be removed using a diamond burr. If required, the upper portion may need to be decompressed. As a result, spinal root should be completely decompressed at the lateral portion. Uh, case two, not only vertebral posterior spurs, but also lateral recess spurs at l 5 one have uh, have to be uh, dissected by the interlaminar approach using an electrical shaver, a keratin, or a chisel. Actually, <coughs> microscopy is easier for lateral recess cases, but more invasive. The MRI and CT of case three show the dissection of the hernia mass with light ossified in the lower side. Case four is central canal stenosis at L45. Stenosis is the Stenosis is decompressed by Pakistani endoscopic laminotomy with unilateral approach. We can recognize four corners which have to be decompressed under fluoroscopy. We chose by lateral decompression method with unilateral approach. Firstly, we must reject the ipsilateral superficial layer of the ligament flabum using a punch and then detach the deep layer from the upper and lower lamina using a dowel. Next, we detach the ligament flabum from the opposite lamina. And then, bore the middle facet, which will cause the lateral recess stenosis to, de uh, to decompress. Uh, finally, after Boiling the ipsilateral medial facet, we should notice the root to be free at both sides. Case 5 is central canal stenosis at L34. Stenosis is decompressed by Pakistan's endoscopic laminotomy with unilateral approach. Case 6 is central canal stenosis at L45. We use the same bilateral decompression method with unilateral approach as the previous case. Case seven is central canal stenosis at L34, in which we open, uh, we once again use the same bilateral decompression method with unilateral approach. A case eight is central canal stenosis at L45. We use the same method. In this complicated case, a pinfall dural tear happened. The torn dural surface was covered uh -huh. with bicryl mesh immersed in fibrin organ liquid using the patch repair technique without water irrigation. Up until recently, microendoscopic laminotomy has been the sole method performed in our clinic to treat uh, lumbar canal stenosis. After clinical research, we innovated the PEL method. Let's look at some of the comparative stats. Number one, post-operative bleeding volume for PEL was less than MEL. Operating time on lateral recess stenosis for PEL was longer than MEL. Operating time on central canal stenosis for PEL was longer than MEL. Four, the incision for PEL was only eight millimeter. Five, PEL requires only a one night stay. Six, the satisfactory date for both methods was about 90%. P 
PEL conclusion. One, uh, PEL requires the seven millimeter or eight millimeter intrusion requiring a short stay. Two, small intrusion causes almost no muscle damage. Three, continuous water irrigation provides clear vision and keeps the coagulator and dew from overheating. Four, PEL has less blood loss during operation. Five, the cannula is narrow and easily positioned. Six, the patient can resume their social activity soon. However, there are a couple of disadvantages. There are a few suitable tools for PEL currently. Also, the learning curve is still quite steep. Thank you so much. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, then uh, we are going to the conclusion.